Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Ben Tran Berger, and in this video, I will detail the remarkable story of whale origins and how they came to be regarded as artiodactyls within a larger group called the Centa Artiodactyla. In the 1960s, the intriguing paleontologist and eccentric evolutionary biologist Lee Van Valen published an article where he hypothesized on the origin of the mammalian order Cetacea, which includes whales and dolphins. Paleontologists had puzzled over the origin of whales and dolphins for years, and often assumed that like the origin of sea lions and walruses, whales and dolphins had arose from a group of carnivorous mammals. Lee Van Valen postulated that the group arose from one of the condylarth groups of the Paleocene and Eocene, the truly monstrous Mesonychids. Mesonychids are known from the Paleocene and Eocene are some of the most terrifying of the mammals. These were the first large body predators in the Cenozoic and were the drivers of faster prey during the Eocene because they became very large themselves during the late Eocene. Near the end of the Eocene, they had become the largest mammalian predators to ever have lived. The skull of the genus Andrew Sarkis measures 80 centimeters long, about the same size as Allosaurus. Here in Utah during the Eocene, we had the large and equally massive mesonychid predator called Harpagolestes. Van Valen suggested that the mesonychids might be the ancestor to whales and dolphins. Not only were they large, but they also had massively large teeth and featured rows of unique slicing molars. This is perfect for hypercarnivore diets and is similar to what you find in toothed whales and dolphins today. The hypothesis came to be regarded as the mesonychid origin hypothesis for whales. Mesonychids are members of the paraphyletic group Condylarthra, but they exhibit paraxic feet, indicating that they were clearly closely related to Arctocyanids and artiodactyls. In fact, mesonychids had a nearly unguliate gray condition with clawed distal toes that supported much of the weight of the animal and are often reconstructed looking more like a giant pig than a giant wolf. Although mesonychids lack a double pole astragalus like artiodactyls have. In the 1990s, molecular studies using DNA and RNA to reconstruct the phylogeny of mammals started to find that whales and dolphins fell out with artiodactyls, near or with a close relationship to living, living hippopotamuses from Africa. Now, hippos are a unique group of very derived artiodactyls, which only have a fossil record going back to the middle Miocene of Africa. No paleontologist had suggested that hippopotamuses were closely related to whales and dolphins, but molecular biologists hypothesized that whales, dolphins, and hippopotamuses formed a group which became regarded as the hippo origin hypothesis for whales. Paleontologists laughed at the molecular biologists, assuming that something had gone wrong with their matrix since it grouped two aquatic mammal groups together. But they did not share much in common, and they even had a fossil record that did not match expectations. There was one way to test the two hypotheses. If whales and dolphins arose from mesonychids, then the early fossils would lack a double poly astragalus. If whales and dolphins arose from hippos or shared an ancestry, then the early fossil would, would have a artiodactyl double poly astragalus. Hence, we just needed to find the ankle bones of early whales to tell which group they belonged to. There was one problem. Modern whales and dolphins don't have hind legs, and this meant that we had to find the ankle bones of the earliest legged whales. Now, one paleontologist to take on this question was Phil Gingrich at the University of Michigan and some of his students like Mark Ewen and Hans Tewissen. They went 
to the deserts of Africa and Asia to search for the oldest fossil whales with hind legs. Now, the earliest whales known at that time are found in the deserts of Western Egypt, and they lived during the late Eocene, between 37 and 40 million years ago. The best known is Basiosaurus, and despite the dinosaur-sounding name, Basiosaurus were late Eocene, early Oligocene whales that lived in the seaway that separated Africa from Asia. Their remains are common in the deserts in West Egypt, in the Eocene marine rocks. The paleontologists were hoping to find the hind limb, and in particular, the ankle bones of Basiosaurus and the closely related Doriodon to see what type of ankle bone it had. These early whales still retain a tiny hind limb. However, when they finally found a well-preserved hind limb of these early whales, the astragalus and calcanium were fused, and it was impossible to tell if it originally had the double pulley style astragalus of an artiodactyl or not. If the scientists were going to solve this problem, they would need to find older deposits from the early to middle Eocene. And they sent out expeditions to the earlier Eocene deposits in India and Pakistan. These were deposited during the time of the Tethys Seaway, but along the Asian coast. This region is also a politically difficult region to do field work for Americans. The western edge of Pakistan, where the best Eocene rocks are located, was at the time a refuge for followers of Bin Laden. The border between India and Pakistan was equally difficult to work in because access restrictions around the border resulting from the political animosity between the two countries. Nevertheless, during the late 1990s and early 2000s, remarkable fossils began to be found in, in the region of early-legged whales. One of the earliest discoveries was Pachycetus. Paleontologists were excited when they found the skulls and skeletons of these animals in Pakistan. Nevertheless, they were disappointed that each time they came to the ankle, the bones were not preserved. It was not until 2001 in which a fairly complete astragalus bone was found, finally solving the mystery of the origin of whales. Whales were artiodactyls. They have a double pulley astragalus. In fact, today we have many four-limbed early whales, such as um, Artiocetus and Rahocetus and Ambliocetus, and they all have the double pulley astragalus. Whales are more closely related to hippos. So this basically indicates that the origin of whales occurred after the origin of artiodactyls, sometime during the early Eocene. The Artiocita, the early whales, were nested within the artiodactyls. The Mesonychids, which are relatives to whales, were not their direct ancestors like Lee Van Valen had proposed. Now, since then, paleontologists have been searching for even earlier whales. And with the discovery of the early Eocene indo hyas from India, they have a link to the earliest artiodactyls. indo hyas is a small, sheep-sized artiodactyl which has pachyostic bones and a thicker middle ear bulla, allowing it to swim deeper in the water than other artiodactyls. It was within this little ancestor that the largest living vertebrates, the blue whale, arose from. Evolution and our ability to make amazing discoveries continues to amaze me. It's the curiosity to know more that drives scientists to keep collecting, to keep searching for answers. I wish we could go into more detail on the evolution of whales and dolphins, but be sure that you know why whales and dolphins are today considered artiodactyls and evaluate the evidence that has been gathered 
both in the field and in the laboratory to support this idea. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website benjamin slash burger.org. Links are found in the description below.